Hey, good morning, City Life family. Welcome to church. Glad you joined us. Um, if you're meeting in a home group, awesome. We just encourage you to gather, pray together, take communion, be in fellowship, pray over one another. So, and if you're watching online from somewhere far away, uh, welcome as well. You know, do us a little favor, drop a little note, tell us who's watching and where you're watching from. It's kind of nice. Uh, as you guys know, this is our second Advent Sunday service, uh, moving quickly, quickly, very quickly towards uh, Christmas. Um, today is Mikolaj. Um, so if you're not from Slovakia, let me fill you in. Basically, your kids have been good all year, which where none of us are. So the alternative is clean your shoes, put them by the door. Next morning, candy arrives. So hopefully we've all been uh, good or at least have clean shoes this morning and got some sweets. So anyways, hey, let's jump into the service. Um, we're going to have some time of worship, special worship for Advent. We're going to have some readings and we're going to uh, have, of course, get into the Word together. So let's do that together. Lord, we just thank you for who you are. Thank you that we can gather in your name. Lord, thank you that uh, you have come, Lord, and you haven't come just once, but you're coming again. And we just want to um, look forward to that. Look forward to what you are doing in our lives. We pray these things in your name. Amen, amen, and amen. So, hey. Without any further ado, let's get into the service. God bless you guys. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name.
Yeah.
up my eyes in wonders and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me bring your love to those around me the only one who could ever say 
government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever
All right, guys, so hey, we're back. Gonna get into the teaching. Uh, once again, this is our second Advent service. Um, if you don't know already, Advent is all about anticipating, looking forward to the Messiah, to Christ, to Jesus. And as Christians, we know that uh, he didn't just come once, but he's coming again. He's coming for you, he's coming for me. This is something we get to look forward to daily, all of the time. So uh, instead of kind of doing what we would normally do where we kind of focus in and hone in on some of those uh, stories of the, the birth of Jesus or the situation surrounding that, we aren't really going to do that. We're going to continue in our Jesus 2020 series, but we are going to look at some of the Advent themes and connect them to the ministry of Jesus, because that's really where we see the implications, the, the point of these huge Advent themes that we usually talk around Christmas time, okay? So, and really what we're looking at is questions like, who is the Messiah? What is he supposed to be like? What are we adventing? What are we waiting for? What are we longing for? Who is he? And what does that mean for us, for us today? So. We're going to start with a story, it's a nativity story, kind of a, the, the birth of Jesus. And then we're going to shift to John chapter 5 and see some fulfillment of that. So, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now God, he's the creator of everything, heaven and earth, everything that you can imagine, God has created. And, you know, he created for himself a name. He said, this is how I want to be identified. This is how I want Messiah, the Christ. This is when I come. This is how I want to be known. He wanted to be known as Emmanuel, God with us. Now, we, this is a pretty radical idea. It goes against the grain of religion and all those tendencies that we have it within ourselves. Because religion doesn't say Emmanuel, it doesn't cry out Emmanuel, God with us. Religion cries out us with God. It's us trying to reach for God. Us trying to make the stairway to heaven. Us trying to achieve and strive and crawl our way and impress God that we would somehow attain, we would somehow be enlightened, we would somehow reach up and be holy as he is holy. And this is a radical idea. God says, you know what? I am the Emmanuel. I am God with us. God with you. God is coming to us. God is reaching down to us. God is taking on our smallness, our flesh, our blood, our weaknesses, our problems, our insecurities, our, all of our mess, all of who we are, our humanity. He comes and he draws close to us that we might get a small view, a glimpse of him. 
God is coming. And it's almost like he's coming and he's coming down. And he's getting close and he's whispering into your ear, I love you this much. I love you this much. Amazing. That is a radical, powerful idea. Not that we reach up to God, but that he has reached down to us to make his home with you with me and that's really the gospel story that's what it's all about that's what Christmas is about that's what we long for that God would be with us Emmanuel so in John chapter 5 we see an event where Jesus Emmanuel has shown up and he's shown up in a powerful way and we're just this is a continuation of the story we spoke about a few weeks ago I'm gonna briefly sum it up here is so Jesus the Messiah the Emmanuel God with us, he comes to this to Jerusalem, to this uh, place that's called the Pool of Bethesda, the House of Mercy. And there's this man who's been paralyzed or broken for 38 years, and he cannot heal himself, and he cannot find mercy even in the House of Mercy. And it's not until the King of Mercy, the Messiah, Emmanuel, Jesus, shows up that this man gets healed. This man experiences grace, experiences mercy. That's what happens when God comes down to us. When God comes down to us. A guy had been reaching up to God for years and years and years and nothing was happening. But once the moment that God come down to him, when he experienced Emmanuel, he experienced healing. He experienced the power of God here and now. And there was this crowd of people and they were asking, what is this? What happened? Who did this? And Jesus was confronted with these questions and he tells them who he is. And he says very, very clearly, John chapter five, verse 18, he says, he was calling himself the son of God, the very son of God, making himself equal with God. Very clearly, Jesus said he is the Son of God. If there's any doubt about it, just read those verses. You'll see he claims to be the Messiah. He claims to be Emmanuel. He claims to be the very Son of God. And what does Emmanuel look like? What does it look like when God shows up, when he's amongst us, when he's with us? So there's three ways that God shows himself Emmanuel. And Jesus will describe it here. In verse 19, he says, um, whoever has seen the Father sees the Son, like Father, like Son. Jesus will say it another way in uh, John chapter 14, verse 9. He says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. We are one and the same. So um, Jesus gives us a glimpse of what God is like. What do we see when we see Jesus, Emmanuel? It tells us in John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The Word, Jesus, becomes flesh, and He made His dwelling amongst us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So when we get a picture of Jesus, when we experience Jesus, we get a a glimpse at the glory of God, we get a glimpse at the grace of God and the very truth of God. The second thing Jesus says, he says he sent from the Father. He sent from the Father. Verse 30 says, I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. The Father has sent me. What was the pleasure of the Father? What was God the Father's pleasure? What was his desire, his will? Uh, why was he sending Jesus Emmanuel? And we see it in the next few verses. Jesus says very clearly, he says, I'm here that you might have life, that you might have life. Verse 26 says, for the Father has life in himself. He is the source of life, and he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, life in himself. Jesus will say later at the end of his ministry, John chapter 14, verse 6 says, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, the very life you have. These are radical, powerful, transformative ideas. You know, and what is my part in experiencing Emmanuel? What do, what do I get to do? We always ask ourselves this, what is my part? What do I do? 
you know what, really all we have to do is just embrace Emmanuel. Just accept him. Let him draw near to you. Embrace him. Say yes to this. Say, I'm all in. Take, I take it all. You know, give me that eternal life that you're offering. It's grace. It's gift. You can do absolutely nothing for it. It is not us reaching up to God, but God reaching down to you and I. We're going to continue in the story because these people, this crowd of people who are asking Jesus who he was, and he's describing he's Emmanuel, he's the Son of God, um, they were looking for Emmanuel. That passage that we read earlier, that was from Isaiah. That was one of their great prophets, and they had been anticipating that Emmanuel was going to show up. And so what did this group of spiritual people, this people who are adventing, who are longing, who are looking forward, what did they do? It says immediately that they tried to kill him. They tried to kill him. The author of life comes, and these guys don't see it. They don't catch it, and they try to kill him for it. Why? Why? Well, they were blinded by the religion. They were blinded by a false sense of spirituality. And Jesus is going to confront them. He's going to confront them on that religious tendency. And I think he confronts us as we read these things. Um, in verse 38 it says, he said to these guys, said, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you will have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse, you refuse to come and have life. These ad adventers, these spiritual people, these people who were longing for God to show up, they chose to embrace their religion over Emmanuel, over the author of life, the lover of their souls. And they believed that they had, if they had studied and memorized enough scripture and were obedient and tried to be holy and tried to climb up the stairs of religion to God, that they would eventually attain. They would eventually be us with God. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. It's not us with God. It's Emmanuel, God with us. They were blinded we sometimes are blinded as we're reaching out to God, forgetting that He has already reached out to you and to me. It is all grace. It is all grace. I have a question here. What did Jesus say the point of the scriptures was? Was the big idea? He says they all point to Emmanuel. They all display who Emmanuel, who Messiah is, so that when He would come, we would see and we would recognize and we would embrace. So before Yvette and I were married, we sent a lot of love letters back and forth, actual physical letters, you know, and they were beautiful. You know, there's these expressions of, you know, our feelings for one another and our hopes and desires together and, and all these kind of things. They're the great um, testimonies of love. It would be foolish of me if I held on to those love letters, but never actually had a relationship with Ivetka. I never actually had uh, a relationship with the love of my life. And Jesus is kind of saying the same thing to this guy, saying, you guys are holding on to the love letters. You're studying them. You've memorized them. You're, try you're, you're dreaming about them. You're talking about them. You're you know, creating communities around them. Yet you've missed the point. You've missed out on the lover of your soul. You're holding on to the memory and the anticipation more than the person, more than Emmanuel. And let us not be like that. Let us not hold on to the love letters and the rituals and the rhythms and the religion more than the lover of our soul, more than the lover of our soul. Jesus loves you. He is Emmanuel. God with you, God with me. So let us embrace Jesus. Let us not miss out on Emmanuel. It says this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. He who has the Son has life. 
He who has the Son has life. Let us advent, let us long, but let us also know that we can receive, that He has come to us. The lover of our soul has leaned in and He's whispered, I love you, come with me, come with me. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys. I hope that it was a blessing for you. hope that it touches your heart. hope that we will draw near to Jesus uh, as he draws near to us in this season. So God bless you guys. Ciao. to God, peace on earth, goodwill to all men, here with the angels we sing. And as He reigns from above, may He reign in our hearts, our sovereign Lord and King.
Hey guys, I hope the service was blessed for you. I hope you were encouraged and hope that we're just embracing Jesus more and more. Um, as we said before, we're going to continue to meet as home groups, continue to meet online. Hopefully on the 24th we'll have a, a live service, another worship and communion and gathering service and just to declare Jesus again. Um, and until then, let's just keep connected with one another. Do meet in the home groups, do meet individually, call each other up, serve one another. We're going to have a few announcements coming up, uh, so please do tune in on those. All right, thank you. God bless. Ciao.